the success of the iPhone, which hit the market in 2007, the major player in the smartphone market was BlackBerry. Even two years after the initial iPhone was released, BlackBerry still had almost 50% of the market. With so much uncertainty in consumer preferences, BlackBerry and Apple made two very different strategic decisions. Rather than improving the quality of their browser, BlackBerry felt that consumers were more concerned with data privacy and data encryption. Apple felt that consumers would be more concerned with the capability of the browsers and the apps. Although BlackBerry had a more loyal customer base, following several product disappointments, most of their customers completely abandoned the brand. Luckily for Apple, this coincided with the release of the hugely successful iPhone 4 in 2010. By that time, the App Store had passed its tipping point in terms of the number of users and the number of developers. Not only did Apple's ecosystem create network effects and raise switching costs, but the sudden rise in demand created greater incentives for developers, which resulted in more apps and more importantly, better apps. This positive feedback loop further raised the value proposition of the iPhone, creating an extremely loyal customer base. Knowing that their customers would always wait for the next new iPhone, Apple continuously extended the time between their upgrades. This strategy enabled Apple to perfect each product and make sure that it was equipped with all of the state-of-the-art innovation. Samsung has since also adopted the strategy for their flagship phone, the Galaxy, but this strategy is not without its downside. By using loyalty to aggregate pent-up demand for future product releases, Apple and Samsung have put themselves at greater risk in the case of a product disappointment. Apple's scare with the Bengate scandal and Samsung's recall over exploding batteries is an important reminder that both firms will have to keep innovating to maintain their loyal customer base.